Hey everyone, this is David Brown with the Migration Update for May 7th, 2023 from the Braddock Bay Hawk Watch. And what a great day it was. I have lots of photos to go through, so let's jump right into it. Kim and I started the day at the Braddock Bay East Spit at sunrise. On our walk out the spit, we had the first eastern kingbird of the year. There were quite a few spotted sandpipers around. I think we had at least 10. This time of year, there's hardly any ducks at all on the bay, but we did have a group of ruddy ducks. Here's another spotted sandpiper in flight, and when they're flying over the water, they tend to stay really low, and they kind of flick their wings downward. It's very distinctive. Standing out at the end of the spit and looking high overhead, we could see some really high songbirds going over. So here's an American goldfinch. You can see it's just really yellow underneath. You can see a little bit of that black cap. And there are also lots of yellow rumped warblers way up high and blackbirds and orioles and all kinds of stuff just pretty much as high as you could possibly see and many of them were too high to get photos here's a solitary sandpiper flying over so we can see that it has dark underwings to contrast with the lighter underside although the upper breast is kind of a darker color as well it's got that eye ring although that's not always visible from a distance and the legs don't really stick out past the tail at all compared to things like greater and lesser yellow legs where the legs do stick out. Here we have a nice male Baltimore Oriole flying high overhead. And here's another Oriole that looks much more yellow, and I don't know if that's just the lighting or if it actually was much more yellow than the other one. And I think we had around 17 Baltimore Orioles fly over throughout the morning. Here's an eastern kingbird in flight. And the one thing to watch for on kingbirds is that they have a white tail tip, although against the cloudy sky like this that doesn't stand out very well. Here's a cliff swallow which is one of the less common swallow species we see. See that it has kind of an orangish rump. The face is a dark red with a blue cap and it has a white forehead. Some Caspian terns were diving in the water in front of us and catching small fish. Here's one of my favorites. Here's the first indigo bunting of the year and this one looked really pretty in the light. Here's another Baltimore Oriole flying over. It's hard to mistake them for anything else when they're bright orange like this. Here we have a tree swallow. And a lot of times when we think of tree swallows, we think of that nice blue color on top. But some of them are kind of a darker color. And sometimes just depending on the lighting, they can look darker overall. But you see that it's completely white underneath from the throat all the way down through the underside. No breast band or anything, just uh, kind of a dark top and a white underside. Here's a Caspian tern, and notice that large red bill. Also notice that they have a relatively short forked tail. And here's a Caspian tern diving straight down into the water. Take a moment and see if you can figure out what bird species this is. If you guessed black and white warbler, you would be correct. I had my first blue-gray gnat catchers of the year today, and I was glad to see them because there were plenty of gnats flying around for them to catch, or some kind of bugs, as you can see some of them caught here in the spider webs. And I like this photo because you can really see those white outer tail feathers on the blue-gray gnat catcher. Here's a yellow rumped warbler and a bit more of a doll plumage compared to a lot of the breeding plumage adult males that we're seeing right now. We were a bit surprised to see that the squirrel had a big apple. Not sure where he found that all the way out there on the east spit. Must have been from someone's picnic. There were a lot of palm warblers around, and most of them are the western subspecies, so they're a little bit more dull compared to the yellow subspecies, which comes a little bit later. I also had my first American red start of the year, and their coloring always makes me think of Halloween, just with that black and orange. And there were plenty of yellow warblers adding a splash of color to the morning. And here's another look at an eastern kingbird. And you can see that white tail tip. It's almost like they took the tail and dipped it in paint. We went to Braddock Bay Park to the Hawkwatch platform in time to start the Hawkwatch at 9 a.m. And as you can see, it was an absolutely beautiful sunny morning with light southeasterly winds. And as the morning went on, it alternated some periods of clouds and sun, but for the most part, there was quite a bit of sunshine. The winds eventually shifted more easterly, and it began to cloud over more as we got into the afternoon. Eventually, a northeast lake breeze kicked in. 
that we stayed at the platform because we had a decent flight line and it was clouding over. So I figured there wouldn't really be any broad wings to catch over at Frisbee Hill. The good flight of yellow rumped warblers continued with many flying overhead. We had a couple horned larks, which we're not seeing too many of recently. We see a lot of them earlier in the season, but only a few now and then this late. A handful of bobolinks put on a pretty good show near the hawk platform. And as the day heated up, we started to see some small kettles of broad-winged hawks. And you can see that there's also one turkey vulture mixed into this group. Here's another group of broadwings, and pretty much all of the broadwings we could age today were still adults. So we have all of the juveniles yet to come. So throughout the month of May, whenever we get good winds, we'll still see a lot of broadwings. Here's a bird that has a bit of a story to it. So just after 10 a.m., I got a phone call from Dan Niven over at the banding station, which is over in the Owl Woods. And he said that they had just had a northern goshawk go over pretty high overhead and that it was heading our way. So we started scanning pretty hard, trying to spot the goshawk, and we didn't have any luck for a few minutes. And a little while later, we heard some commotion overhead and there was the local cooper's hawk chasing this bird which was larger than the cooper's hawk and had a long tail so we knew it was an exhibitor so immediately i snapped a couple of photos you can see it going away here and you can see that long tail you can see it's got some sort of um, damaged tail feather that's what's sticking out here you can see some bulging secondaries and pointed wingtips so right away, I was pretty sure that this was probably the goshawk that Dan had called about. I got the bird in my scope and followed it. Eventually, it started to circle, and I was able to confirm that it was a goshawk. And because of the southeasterly winds, as it circled up, the wind was pushing it back away from us. So it circled for a few minutes and um, eventually climbed up pretty high and was pretty far away, and then it started to glide towards us. Here it is as it was gliding by. Again, you can see that long tail that's relatively wide. You can see this is a big, bulky bird with very broad wings. And it took about 11 minutes from the time that I took those first photos to when I took the second batch of photos. So I followed it for a while in the scope because I knew there was a field trip coming from the Buffalo Ornithological Society. And uh, I didn't want to lose the bird because there's nothing worse than having to tell people, oh, you just missed the goshawk or you just missed the golden eagle. So I made sure I stayed on it. And um, right as it was going by, the first couple of them were walking up on the platform and I got them on the bird. And there were a couple still over at the cars that they called over and they got to see it as well. Another photo of the same northern goshawk. And again, just look at how broad those wings are. And one last photo, more of a going away angle, but again, the really broad wings stand out. And goshawks have a relatively small head. They almost have a silhouette more close to a sharp-shinned hawk as compared to a cooper's hawk. You know, we think of cooper's hawks as being lanky and having a big head that sticks out. Goshawks don't quite look like that. They look small-headed. Their wings look more rounded and broad, kind of like that of the sharp-shinned hawk other than the goshawks are much, much larger. So when they flap, it's a slower flap. When they circle, it's a slower circle. Here we have another yellow rumped warbler. And the main thing that stands out about these in flight is the yellow patches here in the side and also that facial pattern. Here's another Eastern Kingbird. And when they fly around, a lot of times they call and their call reminds me of the sound of electricity. And you can see here in this photo that the white tail tip kind of disappears into the background. Here's a northern harrier going away from us. You can see that somewhat long tail and kind of lanky pointed wings. Has hardly any streaking underneath, so this is probably a juvenile. This bird looked a little pointy winged as it came over, so I took a photo to double check it. But it turned out just to be a broad winged hawk. You can see that straight trailing edge in this glide posture. And it's an adult, so you can see the single wide white band on the tail. We had some pretty good looks at a lot of sharp-shinned hawks today. So sharp shins are small exhibitors, kind of small-headed, more squared-off tail tip. And you can see from the vertical streaking that this one is a juvenile. We had a few groups of American pipits fly over, just a small number. 
And pipits are pretty plain looking. They have a little bit of a distinct facial pattern, but overall they're pretty drab. Here we have another juvenile Cooper's hawk. You can see they have kind of a bug-eyed appearance. It's a bit of a big eyeball and a small head. You can see the bulge here shows that it has a full crop, so it has eaten recently. Probably caught and ate a yellow-rumped warbler, if I had to guess. That seems to be the most plentiful food supply right now. Although I told that joke at the hawk watch and no one really laughed, so I don't know. But you can see that really squared off tail tip as well. Somewhat compact wings, just less lanky than the Cooper's hawk. Here's another exhibitor, and in the field I think I called it a sharp-shinned hawk. Looking at the photo, I'm honestly not 100% sure. Um, I think it's still a sharpie, but if it's a coop, uh, not the end of the world. But anyway, I wanted to point it out because of the interesting underside markings where the patterning's more concentrated on the upper breast and then hardly any down lower. So just a little bit of a, a variation to the normal pattern that we would see. Here's another yellow rumped warbler. Again, notice that yellow dot on the side and the black mask on the face. We had a nice look at this male American kestrel. You can see those nice pointy wings since they're a falcon. And I feel like this is the first kestrel we've had a good look at in a while. Here we have the underside of a cliff swallow. Earlier we saw the top side from the east spit. Here's another juvenile sharp-shinned hawk. And again, notice the full crop. Here's another solitary sandpiper. And notice the same field marks we saw before with that eye ring. Some markings on the upper breast, but otherwise plain underneath. Um, overall dark underwing, although it does have some patterning here, and also some patterning to the tail, and the feet barely stick out past the tail. We had small groups of American goldfinches migrating throughout the day. Here's another juvenile sharp-shinned hawk. Again, notice that small head and the really squared off tail tip since all of the tail feathers are the same length. Here's a group of six sandhill cranes, and you can see that a lot of them are getting quite rusty colored as they get into their breeding plumage. And we also had an additional single individual sandhill crane fly by later for seven total for the day. As it started to cloud over more in the afternoon, the broad wing numbers had kind of died off, but started to get a bit of a turkey vulture flight picking up. Here's another look at a turkey vulture. And you can see a, a lot of the vultures are molting this time of year. You can see this feather growing in. There were tons of blue jays migrating today. I mean, groups of 10, 20, 50, 100. Sometimes we'd look out over the west spit and maybe see um, 100 or 200 at a time. So just a, sort of a constant flow of small groups of blue jays throughout the day. Pretty cool to see. This immature herring gull was soaring around up above us, so I decided I'd snap his photo since it seems like I haven't taken any herring gull photos in a while. We see a ton of them early in the season, and... Uh, when there's not many hawks to look at in early March, I take a lot of gall photos, but uh, lately I've been neglecting them. Here's another bird that's always a crowd favorite. It's a green heron. And it wouldn't be a day at the Braddock Bay Hawk Watch without the local Cooper's Hawk chasing every turkey vulture that flies by. And if you didn't hear, vulture surfing is the new hip trend. This adult bald eagle gave us a nice look. Here's another solitary sandpiper showing those same field marks we talked about earlier. And we even had a spotted sandpiper fly across in front of the platform, which is a little bit unusual to see. It's a species that sometimes to get them at all, we have to look way over towards the east spit and hope that we see them in their distinctive flight style low over the water. But this one gave us a pretty nice look. And you can clearly see where they get the name spotted sandpiper. Here's an immature bald eagle that migrated by. And here's the local Cooper's hawk after yet another turkey vulture. And he tried to catch a ride on this one too. And you can see that some of the vultures we're seeing right now have kind of a split tailed appearance as they're growing in the central tail feathers. Here's the vulture attempting an evasive maneuver. But the Cooper's hawk stayed hot on its heels. And one more look at that adult Cooper's hawk chasing a turkey vulture. It was nice to see this breeding plumage common loon fly overhead. There was a fair bit of swallow activity today. Here we have a barn swallow. Notice that blue head with a reddish throat and mostly whitish underside, along with the long forked tail. The swallow that really stood out to me today was bank swallow. We had a pretty good number of them. They have kind of a fast, buzzy call, and I kept hearing it throughout the day. And they're a small swallow. They're smaller than our other ones, so even just looking at them, sometimes you can tell that that's what they are. 
And if you get photos or if you get a close look, you can see this brown breast band to confirm the ID. Here's a flock of greater yellow legs that flew over. And here's another bobolink flying past. And can you tell what kind of swallow this is? Yep, this is another bank swallow. We see that brown breast band compared to the white throat and white rest of the underside. Here's an osprey that flew by towards the end of the day. There were a few palm warblers hopping around enjoying the flowers on this tree. And here's a bobolink perched up singing. And here is kind of a cool optical illusion at the end of the day, probably something to do with the temperature difference out over the lake. But we couldn't see the ship at all, except maybe this dark line here might be part of it. But we could see its upside down reflection in the water um, that almost looked like it was an upside down ship floating because you could almost be mistaken into thinking that this was the horizon. But actually the horizon's somewhere up here. But um, yeah, it's really interesting to see an upside down ship going by on the lake. And throughout the afternoon, it got overcast as rain was approaching that eventually shut us down around three o'clock. Taking a look at the eBird checklist, we had a really good day. We had 71 species at the East Spit and at Braddock Bay Park, 74 species today. Taking a look at the hawk count report for our migrant raptor totals today, we had 148 turkey vultures, five osprey, seven bald eagles, six northern harriers, 92 sharp-shinned hawks, two cooper's hawks, one northern goshawk. For beautios, we had 224 broadwings and four red tails. We had one golden eagle. We had three American kestrels for a total of 493. And the golden eagle was coming in at us real nice. And just as I got my scope on it, it turned, giving me a nice look. But then unfortunately, it kept turning and went back to the south, gliding away from us. So most people on the platform only got to see it as it was going away, unfortunately. That brings the May total to 4,753 and the season total to 41,578. The new species for the season today were Solitary Sandpiper, Eastern Kingbird, Blue-Gray Gnatcatcher, American Red Start, Indigo Bunting, and Gray Catbird. Taking a look at the forecast for tomorrow, it's looking partly cloudy with a high in the mid-60s. Winds light from the northwest would expect moderate migration. For Tuesday, a few passing clouds but otherwise sunny, high in the low 60s. Winds north-northeast at 5 to 10, so that's a bit of a lake breeze. We'll probably end up at Frisbee Hill. Expect light to moderate migration. And for Wednesday, it's looking mainly sunny with a high in the mid-60s. Winds west-northwest at 5 to 10. It's looking pretty good. Would expect moderate migration. All right, what a spectacular day of birding with all the warblers showing up and then a good hawk flight with a goshawk and a golden eagle. So hope you can come out and join us soon at the Braddock Bay Hawk Watch. From Lyco Birds, this is David Brown. Thanks for watching.